What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. I hope it's not the first time that you're watching my videos, but in case it is, I'm a third... Wait, no, hold on. Thanks coronavirus, I'm actually a fourth year medical student now, officially. I'll explain like all of that later on in the video. Uh, but I know this is like a bit of a change of scenery, but I'm currently in Norway. And the reason why I'm in Oslo right now, uh, I will explain all of this story. It'll all make sense, I'll explain it right at the end. Uh, but in this video, I wanted to give you guys a quick update as to what's going on in medical school. As you all know, the current situation of coronavirus means that a lot of our lives are changing. And mine as well, you know, my life has completely changed because of this virus. Um, the next five to six months are going to be completely different as to what they were supposed to be. So I thought it'd be nice to kind of sit down uh, and talk to you guys about exactly what has happened in our medical school here at King's College London and what is going to happen over the next five to six months because it's a very drastic sort of change that's going to be happening. So I want to start off by talking to you guys about what was meant to happen before this whole coronavirus happened. I'm going to move on to talk about what is going to happen now that the university has officially released information as to what's going to be happening. And then after that, I want to be talking to you guys about my predictions as to what I think is going to happen um, over the next couple of months. And then after that, my concerns as to what, uh, yeah, what's concerning me about this whole coronavirus thing. And lastly, my plan as to what I'm going to be hoping to do over the next five, six months. Uh, so yeah, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. And uh, let's start off with what was supposed to happen before all of this coronavirus uh, happened. All right, so starting the story off as to what was supposed to happen. Uh, so I have just finished my six week rotation on uh, vascular, uh, cardiovascular basically, uh, in hospitals. As of last Friday, I officially finished that rotation. We were supposed to have two weeks of lectures. Uh, one week of the lectures was supposed to be on a themed week, which is including uh, mental health and also surgery. And the last week of teaching was gonna be on uh, neurology, which is our next clinical rotation. So after these two weeks of teaching, we were then supposed to move on to six weeks of hospital placement. So I was supposed to be on uh, my neurology block, which is my last and final block of third year. And while all of this was happening and while I was supposed to be in the hospital, I was also supposed to be preparing for my final uh, OSCE practical exams at the end of the year to finally then complete third year, uh, have summer, and then move on to fourth year. During the two weeks of lectures, I was actually supposed to go on holiday. Uh, the reason why is because all of the lectures were actually recorded and put online previously. Uh, so I actually had already watched all of these lectures uh, back in December last year. So I officially and essentially had two weeks off of holiday. And what I was going to plan over the last, over those two weeks was to first of all come to Norway, uh, spend around uh, four to five days in Norway with my family, and then I was supposed to go to Dublin to fly and meet my friends uh, to celebrate one of my friend's birthdays. And then after Dublin, I was supposed to be back in London and then meet my cousin in Cuba for two whole weeks. I was supposed to be in Cuba with my cousin and her friend, literally chilling on the beach. And then finally come back to Europe uh, and then go on a little trip with my best friend to Berlin. And we're supposed to be in Berlin for a whole weekend and then finally come back for the six weeks of rotation in neurology that I mentioned. So that was the plan. That was what I was supposed to do. Uh, and then after doing my six weeks of rotation, finish off the uh, OSCE exam, and then have two months of summer before coming back and starting fourth year again. But yeah, that was the original plan, but thanks to coronavirus, things have completely changed. And I wanna move on to the next part of the video, which is explaining to you guys about what is going to happen now that coronavirus is with us and changed everything. Okay, so I wrote down a few things on my phone uh, to talk to you guys about what has happened and what the university and our hospitals have officially told us about um, what is gonna happen in the future. So the first thing they told us is that all clinical placements have now been canceled. Uh, and the reason why is, is that unlike other degrees in universities, uh, medicine is taught, uh, at least in our clinical years, and also our preclinical years as well, uh, is taught by doctors. Um, so all of our teachers are doctors who obviously are now uh, under immense amount of stress and they have been ever before. Uh, so all of our doctors are now working uh, in hospitals with coronavirus patients and helping them. And NHS is under an immense amount of pressure right now. Uh, so because of that, all of our um, hospital teaching has been cancelled and also because the doctors are not going to be able to supervise us uh, safely and do any of the teaching as well that they were supposed to have. So that's the first point is that all clinical placements have now been cancelled. The next thing is that if you are on clinical placement and living at the hospital, you are allowed to stay there uh, until further notice. The next thing is that all teaching on campus has been cancelled until early May, meaning that we will not set foot on campus anymore or in the hospital for our teaching. Uh, they're actually going to deliver all of this teaching online. Uh, so we're going to be having uh, online lessons and seminars and all of our campus-based teaching for the next two weeks that we're supposed to have will now be delivered online, which as I said for me isn't really a problem because I had already done all the lectures in advance. The next thing is that all students have actually been advised to go home. Uh, so whether you're an international student or you're a student who's studying outside London, we've all been advised to return to our family homes and not come back to university basically until the next year. So for me, that means that I don't have to be in London anymore, uh, hence why I'm in Norway right now. So as I said, all of our teaching over the next two weeks is now online. 
Uh, the reason why is that in medicine, because we're such a large year group, we've all been divided into different uh, different blocks. So while I was on my vascular rotation, another group of students within my year were doing the uh, neurology rotation, which means that they do have neurology uh, lectures actually already pre-recorded for us to watch. Uh, as I mentioned. In regards to our clinical teaching that was going to be delivered in the hospital during our six week rotation, uh, that's now being delivered through webinars and also other technological solutions which they haven't really told us about, but it's all going to be online. The next thing is that in medical school we, we are given like a little portfolio. This is like a small book where we have to go and um, have certain skills signed off. So all of the clinical skills like taking blood and assessing patients, those are all signed off by doctors to prove that we actually have the capability to do so. Uh, so all of our portfolio requirements are now being changed since we essentially won't have enough time anymore in the hospital to see patients and see doctors and have that all signed off. So our portfolio requirements are now being changed. Also, all electives for our final years have been cancelled. Uh, so in your final year, we normally go on an elective abroad. So it's around an eight week thing that we go abroad and um, work in a different hospital environment and different clinical setting. Uh, so for example, I was planning to go to maybe uh, South America to do my elective abroad. Um, but yeah, that's now all been cancelled, so all the final years are not going abroad anymore and are not doing the eight-week placements in the hospitals that they were supposed to abroad, which kind of sucks for them, but, you know, it's a reality. Also, the uh, PSA exam, which is a prescribing exam uh, for medical students, has now been cancelled for final years. We weren't directly told that because we're third years, but from what I've been told, the final um, prescribing exam the final years before they do become doctors has now been cancelled. They've also advised against all conferences. Um, so I actually had a conference uh, that was supposed to happen in uh, in March in Amsterdam. I had a poster presentation like I did in, uh, in Greece um, on one of my last videos that you may have seen, which has now been cancelled until further notice, which sucks. That's now been cancelled. The last thing which is actually quite exciting is that um, in terms of working in the NHS, the, there's been a lot of talks within the GMC, the BMA and other medical organisations to actually ask medical students to come and help out in the hospital. So some of the senior medical students like myself in the clinical years uh, may possibly be asked to go back and help people and help all the patients in the ward. Um, not to work as junior doctors and not to step up as doctors, but to do the tasks that we're competent in. So we are able to do stuff like put in cannulas, uh, put in catheters to take blood, uh, to do some clinical assessments. There's loads of stuff that we are able to do as 30 medical students. And there is like a huge service that we can provide for the NHS. Uh, so we were told that if we do want to volunteer in the future to help out with the uh, crisis right now in the NHS, it will be a possibility, but they haven't officially uh, released information on that as of yet. Um, but it's something I definitely would love to go back to do. As I said, I'm kind of, I'm basically free over the next five months and I would love to just go back and volunteer in the hospitals. And although I am only a third year medical student, there's not really much difference in terms of like ethical responsibility of me being a third year medical student and a year and eight months later when I'm finally a doctor. In terms of the ethical uh, obligation and ethical responsibility that we have as healthcare professionals to help out in a situation like this, I feel like it kind of is my responsibility to go out and help people who are less fortunate and who may have the virus. And most importantly, they've also advised us that this will not get in the way of our learning as doctors and our training to become doctors. So that's quite important as well. Oh, and I also should mention that uh, our OSCE exams in May, it's really funny, like as I was planning out this video on my phone, um, I wrote that my prediction is that our OSCE exams in May will be canceled. Uh, and yeah, they literally like five minutes ago just sent me an email to my phone saying that the OSCE exams, uh, the pr which are the practical exams that were supposed to sit in May, have now been completely cancelled. Meaning that we essentially are not supposed to come back to medical school. There is no more teaching in medical school uh, on campus. We will not come back to hospitals for teaching and they also will not have any more assessments for us in May. Which more or less basically means that I've now moved on to fourth year, uh, just like that. But they did mention to us that they will be making sure that our next exams in fourth year will cover the content that they were supposed to cover in May as well. So it wouldn't compromise patient safety and they will test our competency in all of these skills uh, that we should have been tested in in the, in the May exams. Uh, so that's also quite a key thing. So in terms of my predictions as to what I personally think is gonna happen over the next couple of months, I think them telling us to come back to medical school in May is way too early of a date. I think that if we were to come back to medical school for some like small teaching sessions, it just won't be possible because although, you know, maybe things with, with coronavirus might be better in May, there will be a huge backlog of patients to be seen by these doctors because in our hospitals, they've canceled all uh, outpatient appointments and also uh, elective surgeries, which means that if we do come back in May and the coronavirus has, you know, recovered by then, there'll be a huge backlog of patients who were supposed to be treated by the NHS who haven't been treated yet. 
So I personally think that May is is too early of a pred prediction for us to be come to come back to medical school. Essentially, as like I said, one of the points I put down in terms of my predictions is that they're not going to assess us in the Oscars. I don't think it's going to happen. And yeah, as I kind of thought. All the Oscars are cancelled. I also wrote down if they don't assess us electronically, they may progress us automatically into fourth year, which is now what they've done as well. What I put down as well is that they may actually ask us to come back over summer to complete our last six weeks of rotation. Although this is kind of outside term time and is technically not allowed by the university, um, it's something that may be a requirement by the GMC, the General Medical Council, to have us do as doctors. And because of that reason, it's something that the university might have to accept and comply with. Um, but as I mentioned, the university have now said that we're not coming back to hospitals up until uh, fourth year, which is end of August. My next prediction is that I honestly do think we will be asked as medical students to come back to health and hospitals on a voluntary basis. I think that over the next couple of weeks, what we will see is that the NHS will be under even more pressure and they will have a shortage of doctors and nurses, particularly because a lot of these doctors and nurses will start falling ill and a lot of them might not be able to come back to work. So I think because of that, there is a chance that as medical students, they will ask us to come and do some of the you know basic skills that maybe nurses or maybe junior doctors might do to allow those nurses and junior doctors to do more complex things like uh, being involved in the intensive care units to look after the critically ill patients uh, where, where needed for the coronavirus. So basically all of this means that the next time that I'll actually continue my training and actually see patients will not be until uh, August, end of August, uh, just as I start my fourth year of medical school, which means that I'm essentially on summer vacation for the next, um, so April, May, June, July, part of August. So essentially five months. I'm, a, I'm basically on holiday for the next five months, which to some people might sound like absolutely amazing, but there's, there definitely is a part of me that's like, what do I do now? Like I didn't ask for four, five months of holiday. And although like holidays are nice, Five months is a very, very long time to be like on holiday doing nothing. But I'm not gonna be doing nothing. I will talk to you guys later on about what my plan is. Uh, so let's move on to the next part of the video, which is uh, my concerns. So in terms of what I'm concerned about, so the next thing is how are they gonna make up the last two months of like missed teaching? How, how are they gonna, how is the medical school gonna make up a whole entire rotation of neurology? Like where is that neurology rotation gonna be? That's something that definitely worries me. And I'm not entirely sure how that's gonna happen. Um, the next thing is that, will it mean that we start our fourth year earlier? Because we're missing this whole entire ro uh, rotation of neurology, will we have to start fourth year earlier just to make up for that lost rotation block? I don't know. Having missed a whole entire block of neurology, which like is one of the most important systems in our body, like we're literally missing the whole of neurology. Will that mean that we'll be less trained as doctors? Will that mean that we're less trained as fourth year medical students? You know, how will that affect us? Will we be less competent than our predecessors? That is, like, I'm sure the medical school will find some way of like replacing this teaching. But that's just something that, again, is up there in the in the air. And most importantly, will all of the medical students and all of the doctors across the country who are missing exams, who are missing training, will this affect our ability to treat patients? And will it, most importantly, affect patient safety? I have no idea, and that's something I'm really quite worried about, actually. All right, so let's move on to the next part of the video, which is my plan. I essentially have five months of summer now. Well, I say summer, but I have, I have five months off now and I, I need to make a plan as to what I'm going to do. So I haven't quite figured it all out yet, but these are my current thoughts. So I was essentially planning to take two weeks off on holiday anyways. Now that I'm in Norway, I am definitely going to take a few days off to kind of chill and recover from the uh, last rotation I did. We had about eight weeks of work, which uh, I want to just kind of chill and recover from. So I'm going to start by, you know, spending time with my family, exploring a bit of Norway as well. Uh, for the time being. It's really funny that I'm actually in isolation now. The rule that the Norwegian government came up with is that if you arrive from a country outside of Norway or outside this like area, uh, you have to remain in isolation for the next two weeks. So I'm essentially on lockdown. I can go outside and like go for walks and stuff, but I can't go anywhere. Uh, not that I would anyways, because it's all closed, but I'm essentially in isolation for the next couple of weeks anyways. One thing I'm also gonna spend my time on is reading. I love reading and when you're in medical school, you don't really have much time to read on your own. So I definitely will like sit facing this way, facing this view and enjoy like reading and reading more books. I also want to spend this time learning a new skill. Like we essentially, like whenever in your life would you have this much time off? Like whenever would you have eight weeks off from work? Or like in my case, five months off from work. That's a huge amount of time. So I definitely want to spend this time like productively and learning a new skill. Uh, for me, one thing that I'm thinking about learning right now is coding. I really want to learn coding and maybe one day come up with an app or like some sort of program to do it like in the medical field. Yeah, so essentially for me, that means uh, doing a coding course uh, to learn a new skill and learn something for my future. For when the coronavirus goes away, and we go back to our normal lives, I'd really love to like come back with a new skill like coding. One thing I'm also gonna make sure to do is to keep up to date with my medical knowledge. 
Although I've essentially been written off for the next five months and I don't necessarily have to practice medicine for the next five months, I wanna make sure that, well, as a healthcare professional, it is my responsibility to make sure that I'm up to date with all of the medical knowledge. So I don't want all of my like knowledge that I've accumulated over the last three years of medical school to go to waste. So I definitely wanna set aside time practicing for the OSCEs anyways, like I would have before. So that when fourth year does actually start, I will be just as prepared as I would have been had I um, had I have actually uh, sat the OSCE exams in May. So over the next few days and definitely like every couple of weeks, I will go through my whole syllabus, make sure that I am competent in all of the practical skills for the exam and also all of my theory of medicine so far. And lastly, one thing I really wanna do is make more videos for you guys. I haven't been very consistent in YouTube over the last couple of years uh, because I've been busy in medical school, but now because I have five months off, I may essentially become a full-time YouTuber. Uh, that story is yet to be told. We'll see about that. But one thing I definitely want to do is to take time to make more videos for you guys, not necessarily to do with medicine now because I won't be in hospital for like another couple of months, but to do something different on my channel. Uh, so stay tuned for what's coming. I'm not entirely sure what it is yet, but something big is coming. So that is pretty much it, guys. That is the update of what's been going on in my life and in medical school. I want to conclude this video by just saying, uh, stay safe guys. It is quite a scary situation that we're all in right now, but just remember that we're all actually in this together. You know, let's support each other. Let's, you know, relieve each other's anxieties. Let's spend time FaceTiming our families and spending time with our families. Let's all like stick through this and get through it together. Uh, so stay safe, you know, try to isolate yourself if you can. Try to minimize your risks as much as you can over the next few weeks by maybe, you know, washing your hands as often as you can. Staying away from people who might be a risk as well. And yeah, let's really try our best to get through this together. Do let me know what you guys think in terms of like this whole coronavirus situation. Like, I'm really interested to know what is going on in the situation where you're in. If you're in GCSEs or high school or medical school, do let me know like what your situation is. That'd be really interesting to know. Also, let me know your thoughts on like how the medical school is handling this whole situation. And lastly, uh, what you think about my concerns about my training over the next couple of months. So thank you so much for watching. I hope it's given you guys some insights as to what happens in medical school when things like this do happen. Uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up as well. Make sure you subscribe for the next video and I'll see you guys on the next one.